EX1 brings some additional shenanigans to Agumon Bond of Bravery, and in playtesting with EOS Agubon and regular Agubond, there's some definite improvements. Consistency has greatly improved with just some minor changes. But I'm not breaking my formula for these videos, so I'll be going over the card by card, the strengths, the weaknesses, and the combos. This deck runs 5 level 2s, 17 level 3s, 13 level 4s, 4 level 7s, 8 option cards, and 8 tamers. For level 2s, I still run the 1 Koromon and 4 Demi Marimon. In my previous video, I had the same ratios and commented on the usefulness of Demi Marimon over Koromon. With EX1 Agumon, you now have improved ways of consistently searching for any tamer and Digimon with Agumon in their name. Therefore, Koromon isn't as necessary, but I still choose to run it over Sakutomon because I have a lot of Greymons in the build. As for Demi Marimon, I'm still getting that plus 1000 DP buff when swinging into security, making my Greymons at minimum 6k attackers to trade with my opponent's blockers. For level 3s, there's a lot of adjustments here with 2 BT1 Agumon, 2 Agumon Expert, 4 BT6 Agumon, 4 EX1 Agumon, 3 P009 Agumon, and 2 Starter Deck 7 Agumon. BT1 Agumon used to be one of our top rookies for the deck to add any tamer. But with EX1 Agumon now, we have the Heavy Lifter who can sift through 3 cards at a time and give us options. I'm still running Agumon Experts as ways to bring back my Agumon, and Agumon Bond of Bravery from the trash. BT6 Agumon is still at 4 copies, for the Agumon Bond of Bravery swings. EX1 Agumon becomes one of our MVP rookies, allowing for searches off the top 3 for a Tamer or a Digimon with Agumon in its name. P009 Agumon is probably the second MVP of the deck for the fact that this gives your Greymons plus 2000 DP. And the reasoning for this is simple. In times where you find yourself getting outswarmed, maybe you need to beat heads against one of your opponent's bodies. P009 Agumon is the only Agumon that buffs your Greymon, whether it's swinging into the security or into an opponent's Digimon. Starter Deck 7 Agumon, on the other hand, only applies the buff if you're going into security. Because of this, I adjusted the ratio slightly to favor situations where I'd have to play more defensively. You'll notice from my previous builds that I no longer run Flamemon in any way, shape, or form. While originally conceptually good, the EX1 Agumon helps with the Tamer search, and my Agunimon count has actually been lowered by 1. For level 4s, I'm running 3 Agunimon, 4 P010 Greymon, 2 Starter Deck Cordramon, and 4 Starter Deck 7 Geo Greymon. Agunimon is one of the finishers of this deck, and there are ways to end this game with this Digimon even if the memory is at 1. If you've seen the combo from Eos Agubon, you know what I'm talking about, but if you haven't, stick around. P010 Greymon is your primary attacker. With many meta decks in the BT6 and EX1 format heavily favoring fast aggro decks, a 7-8k DP threshold is a fairly safe check into security. Agumon Bond of Bravery and Gabumon Bond of Friendship are two of the most competitive decks right now, and because of their high rookie counts, can lead to quick and easy checks. As for Cordramon, I'm presently using blockers over using Magnadramon for life support, because I just don't want to give that much memory for an opponent. And Geogreymon, a Digimon that pops out of security and deletes a Digimon with 4k DP or less. A great counter to Bond decks in general. There's not a lot of changes here for this lineup, but I think EX1 Greymon might have been considered had I run EX1 Skull Greymon. While this deck does not run any level 5s, EX1 Skull Greymon has been talked about for this deck. And while this does increase your DP going into security, I felt the 3 memory investment going into him, then getting deleted only to get a suspended Agumon, wasn't worth it. Having playtested it, it feels a little slower and the dependency for level 4s doesn't make it feel as fast as Agumon's going into Greymon's, or just slamming level 3's down. For level 6's, some variations of the deck run Magnadramon, but I also feel that decks that do run it also run Red Memory Boost to counteract too much memory to the opponent. Because this version of the deck does not, I've opted out of using this card. However, I had considered P005 Patamon as another option. For level 7s, this deck wouldn't be Agumon Bond of Bravery without Agumon Bond of Bravery. 
Because EX1 Agumon can search for Digimon with Agumon in their name, this Digimon also fits the bill. Additionally, the only way to use this Digimon in this deck is with an Agumon and Taikamiya. And as a result, you trash two of your security as well. One key thing to comment on is knowing when to bond. Although, I have had games where I literally bonded three times and took my own security down to zero. Knowing matchups is usually important as handing three memory to D Brigade players with zero security could spell Dark Dramon. Two memory is especially the worst, where blue decks can just Evo into hybrid for game. And remember, if your opponent has one security and one Digimon on board, Agumon Bond of Bravery can end the game right then and there, deleting their Digimon, trashing their security, and going straight for game. For option cards, this deck runs the standard 2 A Delicate Plan, 4 Gaia Force, and 2 Atomic Blaster. I prefer this because Atomic Blaster can't touch a lot of higher DP Digimon, like Jessmon, Gabumon, and Lilithmon. But when they swing into your security, Gaia Force could be your saving grace to you. A Delicate Plan is just a staple in red now because of security control. But for adjusting the ratios, I suggest looking at your meta or what you predict your meta will be. Atomic Blaster is amazing against wide building boards, and even though Deep Brigade is rogue, it's hella good. Other builds may also run Lightning Joust for extreme aggro. And don't get me wrong, with Bond you're doing so much security damage to yourself with Bond that you'll always have less security than your opponent. But my issue is, Lightning Joust doesn't punish the opponent for checking it, and Atomic Blaster maximizes that. Lastly, Tamers with 2 Marcus Damon, 4 Taikamiya, and 2 Analog Youth. Marcus Damon is mandatory for the Greymon usage and gaining 1 memory when you attack. 4 Taikamiya for the extra draw and memory when pushing a Digimon with Greymon or Agumon in its name from Raise to Battle. And triggering the evolution from an Agumon into an Agumon Bond of Bravery. And lastly, Analog Youth. This card allows you to reveal the top 3, add a Digimon, and ship the rest to the trash. Effectively, you have 6 ways to find Agumon Bond of Bravery with EX1 Agumon, and 2 Analog Youth. But if you choose to trash Bond, you also have 2 options in the form of Agumon Expert to pull it back from the trash. As for the strengths of this deck, the deck is very aggressive, and at points can completely disregard blockers. However, its weakness is many times blocker type decks that utilize Craniumon. A secondary weakness would be knowing when to bond. Sometimes bonding can outright be game ending for you. Other times, it can win you the game. As for combos, this deck aims to get 1-2 to two ties on board as early as possible. With the addition of Marcus Damon, you'll be able to set your memory to 3, or 4-5 to five when an Agumon gets pushed from raise to the battlefield, and netting you a draw based on the number of ties you have. Afterwards, it's important to consider your security a lot of the time because some effects trigger, while others do not. For example, say you have Analog Youth on board with two ties and one Marcus. You push Agumon from Raze to the battlefield, going up two memory and drawing two cards. When you Agumon Bond of Bravery, it's important to have a minimum three security, because sometimes the deletion of Agumon Bond of Bravery is important for combos. Your opponent may be playing security control, so this check is very important. You Bond of Bravery, going down to 2 memory, drawing for evolution, and trashing 2 security to go to 1. Because of this, Agumon Bond of Bravery will be deleted at end of turn. You play a delicate plan to guarantee safety swinging into the security. You delete 1 Digimon on board, trashing the top security, then swinging 2 more security with Agumon Bond of Bravery. Now at 1 memory, you decide to Evo your Tai Kamiya into an Agunimon to finish the game. Memory hits 1 on your opponent's turn, but Agumon Bond of Bravery is deleted. Because a level 5 or higher Digimon with evolution sources was deleted, you may suspend Analog Youth in order to hatch a new egg and gain 1 memory, which keeps it to your turn at 0. And Agunimon can swing and finish the game. In an instance this doesn't end the game, you could potentially Evo into another Agumon, then Expert for the Bond that's now in your trash passing your opponent 3 memory. But remember, you have an Agumon and Bond ready and waiting again next turn. Just be sure your security never goes to zero when you Bond to use the effect. 
This is my preference on Agumon Bond of Bravery, and while it's extremely aggressive, there's so many other cards I want to play with the deck. Whether it be Lightning Joust, or Skull Greymon, but this is the build I find most consistent. What do you think of EX1 Agumon Bond of Bravery? What are changes you've made to your variant and like about it? Let me know in the comments below. And moving forward, I'll probably be doing more theory builds as a lot of you enjoyed Tyranno Aggro. This is Digipanda. Logging out.